Hello. I am sitting in the uh, Zurich, Switzerland airport, not to catch a flight, but rather a bus, uh, a Flix bus, which is like the no frills budget buses in the US and Europe, obviously too, maybe other places. Um, but anyway, I've got a uh, decaf almond latte here from Cafe Spettacolo. Cool place, got some nice employees. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, Laura is up looking for some chocolate, some Swiss chocolate to take back as gifts. Not that we have any room in any of these bags because they are heavy and they are full, but you know, you find room, I guess. And you know, giving gifts is important, you know, it is actually. I think acknowledging people's, you know, place in your life by doing nice things for them is a good thing. But so anyway, um, I have had something on my mind yesterday and today that I would like to share briefly. This is gonna be a, probably a short, probably a uh, shorter video. <laughs> it's funny, I just said probably and probably. One of my favorite examples of how language gets distorted, I like to tell my students every year, is you have the word probably that can get chopped down to probably, and that can get chopped down further to probably. The word probably has two Bs in it, and you can get rid of both of them and say, I'll probably go out tonight. Or hey, you gonna go to the movies with this? Probably. So you can chop that down word twice, that word down twice, but that's not what this video is about. So anyway, uh, while we were in uh, Spain and France and wherever it was originally, my good friend from the high school I teach at, at Carter Riverside High School, Donna Lasker, uh, she was like, y'all should come visit. And I was like, that sounds kind of cool. But I always have this thing, you may have seen other videos, even when I was a kid, like if I was at a friend's house when I was a kid, and the dad or mom or whoever, I remember this one specific time, they're like, hey, would you like a, you know, a fried egg for breakfast? And I was like, nah. And they were like, well, it's breakfast time. We're going to have some, you know what I mean? And I was like, mm, I think I'm not hungry. And I had this weird, like, insecure desire to not impose on people. So I just was like, I'll just not eat instead of inconveniencing somebody, even though in reality, if you, if you learn eventually that letting people do things for you is actually a gift to them as well. That's an important life lesson that I think everybody really needs to know, right? Is that you're not taking from somebody when they give, you're really giving to them when they give to you, most all the time. Now there's ways to, you know, be uncool about it and selfish, but anyway, Donna, good friend for years, her and I have worked on some cool things together and just had, an, you know, just insane amount of fun together doing doing things at school and so forth so she was like you should really come and I was like really tell me more about that she was like no seriously we're both in Europe you guys have a pretty open schedule she's like you should just make it happen and so she even sent me a pretty long you know message on on uh, Facebook Messenger and I read it and I was like she really is not gonna be annoyed by this and so that funny little part of my childhood that still wants to not accept invitations I was like she's convinced me it's okay to you know stop in switzerland and spend some time at her at her uh, at their family's house you know through her through her marriage with jan and again i've been to their house in fort worth for parties and i mean we've just done so many things it's not like they're like new friends or strangers or anything but i still needed to get pushed a little bit further but that's still not my point the beginning of my point is that they were extra extra inviting and just showed this extra super level of like, just, let me think of what it would be. It's not just the invitation, it's love is what it is. It's like, they just really like, they erased, like she just destroyed any feelings of like fear or doubt and just made it so clear that we were welcome, right? So that's the first point. It's like that that was that was an amazing invitation to receive. All that love and all that all that confident just reaching out to somebody that she cared about. It made me it it I knew. She left me feeling sure that we were not only allowed to be there, but we were going to be giving a gift to them by allowing them to host us in their home here in Zurich, right? So that was the first thing. Now here's the next thing, next level, next level. And you may have seen it in some of my other videos. The next thing for me was Jan's, okay, Jan. Okay, let's start with him. 
If you want to talk about an honest to goodness, deepest place of your heart, enthusiasm and joy for showing us around his hometown of Zurich. I mean, it literally was like just this amazing boyish, just glee that he had taken us around. He's, there's another video, he jumps in Lake Zurich. He just couldn't help himself. His excitement and his love for his hometown was so much that he just had to take his clothes off and jump in the lake. He just couldn't help himself. He just loves it so much. And so then, you know, we just had so much fun eating there along the lake, walking along, walking into their downtown, old town area. Every step of the way, he just, he couldn't contain his love for his home city and his love for sharing it with some other people who didn't know it, right? He knew he had this, this, this magical opportunity to share his home with people who didn't yet know it. And he just really, really grabbed that opportunity and ran with it as fast as he could with as much like excitement and again, just so much joy, right? And I, I could feel it and I loved it. I just loved the whole, I loved the whole part of the process because we were receiving something exciting for us while he was generating an amazingly exciting time for himself by giving it to us. I just love that. Let's go to the next step. His mom and dad, who are the most incredibly hardworking, and you know, they're, they're so organized and thorough, the way that, you know, that, that, that uh, like Swiss are kind of famous for, just really having their stuff together, right? And her office, I didn't really, I didn't take a picture or video of it, but like when they were getting us ready to go to the bus uh, this morning, to go to the train, to get to the uh, airport where we are now, to get to the bus, it's like they just busted out into like legit, just like science calculation accuracy superstar mode to make sure that we got the information we needed and she's got this office with like three computers all these maps everywhere and just like every just this crazy setup right amazing setup and this is not Jan this is his parents right you know they're not 25 years old anymore right but they still just have the sharpest minds so they were working on that together. So anyway, they invite us into their house. They show us around the city in such an amazing way. And uh, how's it going? And then every step of the time in the house, he's just like, please, you know, what can I get you in my home? And I'm just like, I'm pretty okay. He's like, well, let me show you all this stuff. In case you need something, I wanna make sure you know where it all is. You know, uh, let me go and get some of that out for you in case you do need it here soon. Here's some bread. Here's some milk for you guys. Here's the glasses for the water. Here's some wine if you guys want something to drink, even though we're not drinking right now. We did have a glass of wine at dinner last night. First, first drink I've had since like February. So it tasted good too, and I feel all right from it. So that was, that was cool. Um, and so then, then this amazing dinner last night. Amazing dinner. I'm, I'm talking like from these, these great, just like little... Uh, that, this amazing salad, all this like amazing, you know, home grilled uh, cheese. I don't remember the names of everything. Amazing Swiss, Swiss uh, brat, a uh, bratwurst, uh, these great little pork loins. Uh, and then at the end, and I made a video of all this, or most of it, this just, I'm talking freaking mind blowing flan dessert. I'm talking like my, my brain traveled dimensions by eating this freaking flan. I don't know what was in it, but I feel like there was more than the regular flan ingredients. I mean, there's a chance it just tasted so good that I feel like I traveled dimensions from eating it, but I just don't know. I just don't know. All I can tell you is the experience I had, which is a strong one. Man, thinking about it right now again, I'm just like, wow. So, what am I getting at here? What am I getting at? You've got people that 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 reach out through cyberspace to, in, to enter my insecure, sometimes insecure, behaving brain to make sure we're we know we're welcome when we get here they just blanket everything with happiness and love in their in their sharing process of showing us this place then the people that have lived here their whole lives the parents just go they they try every tries not the word they commit themselves so fully to making to making us comfortable and giving us everything he just he kept telling us legitimately i know to some people it's a cliche but to him he was like look he's like while you're here this is your home he was like this your this is your home anything you need you get it it's yours and i just was like wow 
I was like, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. And so anyway, that was so great. So um, the employees at this cafe are really cool. She's from Italy, working here in Switzerland. I like to know where people are from. But so um, we'll say hi to her really fast. What, what was your name again? My name? Yeah. Asia. Asia. I'm nice Jason. To nice to meet you. you. I'm just uh, doing a quick hi. message. Asia, you're from Italy, right? Yeah. What's the name of your hometown again? Piacenza. A Piacenza? Yeah, you, you don't know this city. This... Don't go to it? No. Where should we go? <laughs> Milan or Rome. Rome. Rome's a great or idea. Naples. Or uh, Naples. Uh, Florentia? Yeah. Florence is good too? You start the north and go down. Okay, I like that. I like that. Well, thank you. It's nice to meet you too. Thank it's you for being too. nice. I appreciate you a lot. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, she's uh, from Italy, northern Italy. And you can, you know, rewind the video to get the name of it again. <laughs> I don't have it memorized, but super friendly. I just, you know, there's a lot of nice people. And I've noticed this too. Actually, this is all part of the video. This is all part of my point. So my point is about kindness, okay? Again, I don't know if that's the word. <clears throat> my, my experience here again is, is, these, is these people, and including the cafe employee here, she came over and she stuck her hand out there to me. I just was saying hi. She stuck her hand out just so nicely, you know, joining in to have a nice talk here while I'm making a quick video. And um, so anyway, let's get to the point of just people really giving here. People being really cool. I love the word cool. And when I was in college English, uh, my, my professor, Mr. McCook, at TCC South Campus was like, man, what a great word. I remember that day, he was like, this word's, the word cool is just amazing. It, it like keeps going and going all these decades and it never stops being cool, right? The word cool never stops being cool and neither do these people we've been dealing with. And so my, my experience again, of just these people really, really opening up, opening up not just their home, but their life, right? So these people here opened their life up in a way to where Laura and I, and hello, Laura. Encontraste cosas? Yes. Okay, it is, uh, oh my gosh, it is 11.35 and we have a bus leaving 11.55. So what am I thinking about today? I'm gonna wrap this up pretty soon. I'm talking about, about you as a person, okay? Right here in your hearts, right? When you are involved in, in these dealings with other people, whether it's opening your life up to them so they can come and, and see where you live in your home and this, this huge sharing, whether you're dealing with somebody as a teacher, as a, a cafe employee like, like her, it doesn't really matter. When you're dealing with somebody else, when you open up yourself, right? Avatar shirt there, gotta sport it there. Love this one, bought this in Boston a few years ago with my daughter and Adrian, with Kaylee and Adrian. When you open and connect with another human being, there's a space that you're creating, right? There's a space you're, cre you're creating that that person can, get, can come into. Now, if your space is an ugly space and it's an aggressive space and you've got all this baggage where it's like, hey, I'll be nice to you, right? I'll be nice to you, but you gotta check off all these boxes. You gotta be a very specific and certain way in order for uh, this to work. Well, that other person knows that, right? And sometimes they'll take the deal, but they know they've got to jump through all these hoops. Sorry for the cliche. They're gonna jump through all these hoops. You ready to go up? Okay, yeah, dos aguas tal vez. And so, uh, so people can feel when they know they have to like fulfill requirements in order to receive uh, from another person. And then this experience we've had here in Zurich is, is like, it's this feeling of knowing that we don't have to be or do or perform anything special, right? We can just be ourselves and uh, allow the love to to just permeate everything, right? It's like it's like their giving didn't have any strings strings attached. And I'm asking you right now, you know, like just that's that's what I'm thinking about today. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about authentic love. And authentic love doesn't have to be between you know 50 year old friends or people that are married, or, uh, you know, uh, you know, children and parents, these really strong relationships. Authentic love is a choice, is, is my opinion. And I'm wondering what you think about it. So let's get to the point to where I wanna know what you guys think. Authentic love is a choice that you can make uh, between people you just met, about the way you're gonna share. It's about, it's about that space you create for yourself and for other people to enter, you know? And again, I just, it's the, it can be the most obvious thing in the world. There's, there's no perfect way to go about it. There's no perfect way to go about it. 
I just think about that, that concept of being cool to people and about how we get the way that we got. You know, all, all of us have a past that brought us here. Uh, but it doesn't define us, right? It doesn't control us. It's part of it's part of the journey that made us, you know, who we are today. But we don't we don't have to sit back and let our past say, oh well, I'm an aggressive person, or I'm a giving person, or I'm a peaceful person, or I'm an angry person, or I'm the most generous person, or whatever. We don't get to say, hey, all that's because of where I came from. It might be partially where you came from. But there's, there's so much choice in the power of who you choose to be. And so these people here in Zurich just chose to create that amazing time for us where I felt, I felt like they, my experience is that these people love me and they just met me. My, they left me feeling loved even though we just met yesterday, literally yesterday. It feels like longer because of the way they left me feeling. But so at the end of the day, just stop and ask yourself, how do you feel? We'll walk a little bit while I finish this video up. Let me grab all this here. So, let me grab this here. It might be, might be cool to walk, walk around uh, the airport here on our way up. Try to grab a better seat on the Flix bus. Oh dang, I have a, yo tengo mi café también. Está bien? See? Okay. So just take a quick check-in with yourself, is what I'm asking. Take a quick check-in, because you know, there's, there's people where if some kids are walking across their yard, they run outside, they're like, get out of my yard, kids. Don't walk across my grass. And then there's other people out there in the world who say, hey, there's some kids out on my lawn that, that walk across every day. I'm gonna take them like, I'm gonna take them a, a little treat outside, a cookie or a bottle of water, or at least wave and say, hey kids, how's it going? How's school? And so, you know, just, what, what kind of space are you guys in your lives? What kind of space are you creating for the people you interact with? And if you feel trapped, right? If you were to answer that question right now and be like, hey, you know, I don't know where Jason's getting at here, but uh, I just, I feel like I'm not a nice person, right? I feel like I'm not a giving person. I feel like, you know, I'm not, I'm not really somebody who's very inviting or I don't create a very good energy. Well, that's, that's a bunch of freaking nonsense, okay? It's only true as long as you keep saying it's true. I have felt stuck before. That's cool, Laura. Laura's gonna go in and grab some water. Aquí está bien? Inside a little airport market center here. But so, hey, check in with how you feel you are with creating that space for people that you're, that you're interacting with. Again, it doesn't matter if it's at work, somebody you're sitting next to on the, on the bus or train station, a family member, uh, your kids' friends, some friends, some friends that you have or that you used to have, or maybe lost contact. It doesn't matter who it is. Anybody in the world. Uh, how's that interaction with you? You know, what what kind of space do you create, and and how does that matter? You know, do you, how do you guys feel about what I'm saying right now? I want to know what you think about how we put ourselves out to the world, and then how it brings people in and creates that relationship uh, because it's powerful. And that's where I'm gonna end this video. I'm gonna end this video by, by assuring you, okay? Again, I'm not telling you it's my opinion. I am assuring you that the, that the space you create that invites other people into it, because other people do join your space. There's none of us that are isolated 100% of the time. It is a powerful, powerful, powerful tool that affects other people's lives one way or another, and it affects ourselves. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. Some of us really, uh, really take that power and uh, and grow it, and uh, and just magnify it. And some of us shrink back from it, right? Some of us are like, "Hey, I don't really want that responsibility. I'm gonna tone it down and really, really hide, right?" But there's no need. There's no need. So hey, uh, I you know I said this is gonna be a short video, but it's not, right? It's been the longest one of my little kind of question series. So what is my question? My question is. Where, where do you guys feel like you are right now in terms of in terms of that space you create with others? Do you agree with me that that space is important? Do you agree with the power that I'm telling you that it has? And uh, also, do you agree with me by saying that you can you can transform, you can transform and create that energy in that space of how you how you are with the rest of your world? in all the things that your world includes, 
do you agree with me and how do you believe on your ability to, to create that for yourselves and for others? Because I'm telling you again, that even if you feel stuck, you're really not. Even if it feels that way, that's not the case. But hey, thank you to uh, Zurich, Switzerland. I wanna point out again, that I rarely in my life, not that it never happens, but I'm saying I get treated great by a lot of great people in my life more than I think I can even really count. But rarely, rarely do I receive the uh, feeling that I'm left feeling after leaving the home of uh, the Laskers. The Lasker family here in Zurich, Switzerland really created that feeling of love and acceptance and joy in our experience visiting them here in their home. And so I cannot find enough words of mine to say, to make, to paint that picture the way that they painted it for us in their actions. So, hey, please have a great day, everybody. Leave me some comments, please. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let's support each other. Let's help each other get wherever we want to get. If you're where you want to be, congratulations. And if you're not, let's get there together, right? Because that's, that's one of the best things of all of life is, is really working as a team and uh, making this special journey we've all been given the best it can possibly be. We're gonna go get that Flix bus headed to Germany now. Thanks for listening everybody. I'm gonna drink a little bit of this decaf almond latte that's been sitting here cooling down a little bit. Thanks again to the really nice girl working at the cafe. Thanks to all of you so much and this great time that we've had here in Zurich. Looking forward to our next stop and I'll see everybody later. Cheers to you.